Who here has a child or teenager in their life? One that's never been behind the wheel of a car before. Picture yourself with this person. Take your car keys out of your pocket and toss them to them. They're going to look at you and say, what? Say back to them, go on, take the car, go and drive it. They're going to ask you, are you coming with me? Are you going to teach me how? Tell them, no, just go and drive the car. So you're not just trusting your 40,000, 50,000, $60,000 set of wheels with this person. You're letting them take their life into their own hands. Hands that have no idea how to control this vehicle. You're not just endangering them, you're endangering many people, people that you don't know. Throwing your car keys to your 15-year-old would be selfish, dangerous, and frankly stupid. You wouldn't do it. See, cars can be dangerous if you don't know how to handle them properly. So can sexual relationships. Children and teens can get into terrible accidents if they don't know how to drive. Going into a sexual relationship without the knowledge of how to safely and respectfully navigate it can have just as, if not more, devastating consequences. I'm guessing that nearly every adult in this room has, at some point in their life, engaged in the act of throwing the car keys to the children in their life and letting fate do what it will. Over half of young Australian women will experience sexual violence at some point in their lifetime. This is the story for many of them. It is also the story of many of the estimated 8% of men who experience sexual violence at some point in their lifetime. This is the story of my peers, the story of my neighbours, the story of my best friend. This is my story. Last year, I graduated from Dixon College. For the bulk of this year, I worked on an action plan aimed at eradicating sexual violence within our community. The accepted definition of sexual violence in Australia refers to many behaviours, including sexual harassment, stalking, sexual exploitation, sexual assault and rape. My six months of surveys, testimonies, emails, interviews and research reveal just how little public schools in the ACT have done to prevent or respond to sexual violence. I'm here today to share what all of my research has led me to believe is the best way to prevent violence for youth. We need to have open conversations between adults and children around healthy, fulfilling, respectful relationships. This needs to further on the work that's already happening at schools. Having contrasted learning in home compared to at school will only serve to invalidate this crucial knowledge. In Australia, 80% of sexual assaults are committed by someone who knows the victim. More often than not, the victim has placed their trust in this person. I believe that sexual violence is not always an inherently violent experience, but instead one where communication is not clear and expectations are not met. Often, parties are left making assumptions that simply aren't true. In the ACT, with affirmative consent laws in place, enthusiastic, express consent is the standard for every sexual act. We need to combat preconceived notions around what sexual experiences are like for teens. The notions that are fed to us through the media, or through exaggerated recounts from peers, as our only source of knowledge on the topic. These notions that entirely shape our view because we're too scared 
or uncomfortable to have a conversation about sex with children. Let me give you a prominent example from Katrina Marsden's new book, Legitimate Sexpectations. You don't just hand youth the keys to the car with nothing but a wish and a prayer. How negligent, how reckless we would be if we did. Instead, we teach them how to drive, giving them all they need to stay safe on the roads as they use their newfound skill to pursue independence, employment, social lives. With this lesson, we give them the gift of freedom. We recognize their right to it. But when it comes to sex and relationships, we're ready to leave people to figure it out for themselves, even though the chance of getting it wrong might mean a traumatic experience for one, or the inside of a courtroom for another. We feel scared, inadequate, uncomfortable having these conversations. But if we don't, the only thing that teens and youth are going to know is a scene in a movie where two people lock eyes and bam, perfect, uncomplicated sexual experience. This is all they will know. Many young men will go into sexual experiences believing consent is given by a quick glance, that talking will ruin the mood, that they have to make the first move because of their masculinity. Many young women will go into sexual experiences believing they're going to be swept off their feet, that they have to be sexually active, that if they're not, they risk making their party partner unhappy. A common misconception, one that holds us back from having these conversations, is that if you talk to youth about sex, they're more likely to go and engage in sexual behavior. This is a mistaken belief, and in fact, the result is the opposite. Greater knowledge of sex and relationships will encourage youth to wait and enter those relationships when they feel comfortable to do so. We're giving our youth the best possible chance to have a positive experience, that they're equipped with the knowledge to foster healthy, open, fulfilling relationships, that they can understand when their needs are being met or violated, and that they can respond to sexual violence. I don't want to pretend to be an academic or an expert on this subject, I'm not. And unfortunately, I also cannot tell you exactly what to say to children. But let me give you another example from Katrina's research. In Colham Primary School in England, respectful relationship education is starting at an earlier age, with young children exploring the power of saying no, but also taking refusal. Eight to nine-year-olds will get into pairs and slowly walk towards each other, gradually getting closer and closer until recognizing when they feel uncomfortable and articulating why. Responses range from, I don't feel comfortable, and you can say no even if you think your friend will be upset, as well as if someone says no or stop, don't keep asking them. I am one of many young Australians who has or who will go through trying to figure out sexual relationships in a world that refuses to talk about them. My dream, my hope that I come to you with today is not to shift the dial a little bit when it comes to sexual violence prevention. It's instead to cultivate and nurture a space in our community where these conversations are conducive to a carefree, joyful, pleasurable, safe place in sexual relationships for youth. I'm here because this conversation between adults and youth needs to start. What I want, what we all need to work towards is coming together as a community to educate our youth on safe, fulfilling, respectful relationships. No more throwing the car keys to someone who does not know how to drive the car. Thank <laughs> you.